This is the Getsy Health Podcast with Janique and Tristan Roney. Hey, you guys, welcome back to the Gutsy Health Podcast. Welcome back to another episode. Yes, uh, we really hope you have been enjoying, have been enjoying all of the episodes. <laughs> I'm tired, guys. I can't uh, speak properly. Good start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we really love putting out these episodes. Please leave us a comment and review if you don't mind and share with your loved ones if you are enjoying this content because sharing is caring. <laughs> so... We, go ahead. Were you going to say something? It helps all of us, really, because it helps us because that means we get more listeners. It helps the people you share it with because they hopefully are going to be getting some good information and content. And it helps you because now you'll have someone to talk about the <laughs> show with where you can say, can you believe they said that garbage? <laughs> It's fun. It's more fun it's to hate fun. on us with a group. <laughs> yeah, please don't. But, or not hate on us. Or love on us. Because if you hate on us, then you're wasting your time and you should go and listen to a podcast that makes you happy because it's all about happiness. But really, if you want to hate, listen to us. I'm fine with that. Okay. <laughs> Let's get going all with, right. our, with our topic today. Um, you guys, I I came up with this um, idea of... Um, of creating a at-home protocol for people who want to do some rapid healing and rehabilitation on their bodies. Um, it was specifically designed for cancer patients because their bodies go through some grueling treatments and therapies. And if anybody needs to heal and repair really rapidly, it's cancer patients. But it is really not limited to cancer patients. No. This protocol is, it's not about curing anything. And no. that that's no, no, no. not just a legal disclaimer because it is a legal disclaimer, but it's, yeah. it's really a, a true statement that all we are doing with this protocol is strengthening the foundation of your health. Exactly. And everybody can use that, even if you don't have an illness. But if you do, mm -hmm. if you've got a chronic illness, a serious illness, mm -hmm. cancer, heaven forbid, then this is going to be one of yep. the most powerful things you can do to yeah. help your body. Let's talk about the kind of people that would benefit from this. Actually, now we're on the topic. Lyme patients, for instance. Mm, definitely. If you have stealth pathogens, um, if you were ever diagnosed with like mono, Epstein-Barr, uh, what else? Uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. Chronic fatigue. And, and that's like a very broad umbrella term, but mm -hmm. this is one that if you have struggled with chronic fatigue for really any reason, yeah. it's going to help. It yes. really is. Um, there have to be modifications to it though, mm -hmm. because there are certain aspects of it that for some people with chronic fatigue and really some people with cancer, some people with Lyme, mm -hmm. it's going to be too intense at first and you're going to have to work your way up to it, but right. I'm jumping ahead. No, so. no, no, you're good. Um, so if you have also gone to your doctor and nobody knows what's wrong with you, this is probably a really good protocol for you as well, because um, chances are you probably have some underlying infection that they can't find or virus or pathogen or just some mitochondrial issue, which when we talk about ozone and um, oxygen therapies, we'll explain a little bit of what's happening with the mitochondria in your cells and how it helps stimulate them and how it helps so many wonderful things in your body system. So should we talk about how we came up with this? Yeah, let's do that. So, um, so you guys back in the day when Tristan was undergoing treatments and then they were like, oh no, there's nothing more we can do with you. Um, but let's just give you chemo anyways. Uh, we sought out second opinions. What, what I think that's smiling? The, the least emotionally that story has ever been told. I'm so <laughs> tired of that story. Like yada, 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 we have to laugh it off guys because it's either laughing or crying. So. Seriously. And we're, we're kind of tired of crying. It's, it's, it's been a rough week. It takes, it takes too much energy. So yeah. we're going to move forward and, and that's, but that's where we were, right? We were out of conventional options. Well, we weren't, but they were just going to well, start throwing things at him and hopefully he wasn't going to die. When, when the them. best that they can promise you is that it might extend your life for a few months, but you'll be really sick and unhappy during that time period. That's, that's when that's you not much the of a bird and say, no, thank you. And which is, on. which is what we did in a much more polite way than that. Yes. And, uh, that's what led to Johnny really diving into the research on this. I did. So, um, so two things happened. I was researching the alternative cancer clinics and I was trying to see what was the common denominator and um, one thing that kept uh, popping up for me was these clinics had these hyperbaric chambers. And I'm like, what is it about oxygen that is so fascinating to them? 
And so I started researching that, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because I remember going and we got a second opinion from Dr. Keith Block from the, the, the block, the block center. Clinic. And, um, and he, th- there were two things he said that really stuck with me and like haunted me and it's never gone away. And so I repeat this a lot to people, but he consulted with us and he said, you know, in the 50 plus years I've been doing this or 40 plus years, he says, really do I see cancer killing people? Um, I see the chemotherapies and the therapies kill them first. And that shook me. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. And again, this is a guy who is extremely well versed in this world. And I need to admit something. I need to be really real for a second because we've been in this world now for three years and I have to admit that what he said has been true in our experience. So I, I feel like I need to say something about this, uh, specifically that if you have chosen to do chemotherapy, that is okay. It is okay. We are not saying right now that if you do chemotherapy, it's going to kill you. No. And that it, it, it's a very important thing for us to say here because we want you to have the right idea. And the right idea is this. The whole point of chemotherapy is to try to kill the cancer before the cancer can kill the body, mm-hmm. right? And this is the the best method that Western science has found. Yeah. And it can be very effective for people. But when you do this, you are essentially playing cancer chicken, mm-hmm. meaning that you are hoping that the body is stronger than the cancer. Mm-hmm. And, and it's stronger than the chemo. Uh, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. Yes. You are hoping that the, 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 oh yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I am so mixed up now, but, but yes, you want, you want to basically pray that the body is able to withstand the chemo Mm -hmm. longer than the cancer can withstand the chemo. And and in in a certain percentage of cases that does happen. And Mm -hmm. those are fantastic cases. We'd love to see that happen, but in many, many cases and in our experience, it seems like more cases than not. Yeah. It's the chemo that breaks down the body so much that the body kind of gives up. Right. And it's not just the body. It's also the soul because chemo is absolutely devastating to your body. Mm -hmm. And I say this from personal experience. It just wears you down physically and emotionally. Yeah. And you get to a point where you don't have the will anymore. You get tired and you feel like you cannot keep fighting. And when that point happens, whether that's physically or spiritually, usually it, it's both at the same time, that's when things basically go downhill really fast and it leads to death. So that's a really long kind of interjection. Yeah. And I appreciate that interjection, but there's hope guys, because that's why we created this protocol. Yes. Because when you are undergoing these therapies, you need to undergo equally as aggressive healing therapies to make sure that you're at like a net zero. Right. And you're not at a net, net negative. Now, obviously we want a net positive and we will always try for that net positive with this uh, tug of war of cancer and chemo. Mm-hmm. But that's why I created this. Pro- well, I, I guess I didn't create it. It just sort of well, came together. No, you, you did. You you created the protocol the same way that a person knits a pair of socks, so, right? All the material was there, but you turn it into what it is. Except I just knitted and I didn't realize what I was knitting. And then all of a sudden I was like, hey, wait, this is a protocol <laughs> we're doing. You know, like that's really cool. So, so another thing that Dr. Block told us that's really important to this is that chemotherapy has a place, right? Mm-hmm. It, it absolutely can be life-saving in the right circumstances. Yes. But in order for it to do that, your body has to be strong. Yes. And that's what he said. He said, if I'm going to put chemotherapy in your Tristan, like your body has to bounce back. So you, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are, there are two aspects to this. One is you cannot overuse chemotherapy mm-hmm. because that's when the body can't bounce back, right. which is what you were saying when I cut you off. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> and the second thing is that when you have that pause between chemotherapies, because it isn't absolutely necessary all the time, it enables you to get stronger Mm -hmm. and to be able to withstand the next brutal round of chemo when it does become uh, necessary in the opinion of you, because you make that decision. Exactly. So another thing he mentioned was 
you need exercise. Research shows that the more you exercise, uh, the less chance of reoccurrence. And I think that's a, a pretty universal it belief. Is. Even the doctor at MD Anderson, which mm-hmm. is the number one cancer center in America, said the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. And so be, on our parting like question to that doctor at MD Anderson, I don't remember what his name was. We said, so what, what should we do? And he said, exercise. Mm-hmm. Exercise has been proven to help prevent cancer from coming back. And, and in my mind, I'm like, but why, why, what is the difference between people that are exercising and people that are not exercising? What does it mean? And what is, <laughs> what does it mean? But guys, think about it. You're exercising, you're increasing your oxygen saturation. You are, you're forcing your body to heal and repair itself. You're forcing your body to be stronger and you're creating this antagonistic environment for cancer stem cells to thrive in because um, cancer has to kind of be in the perfect setting for it to like set up shop. Basically it has to be in a nice, obviously wet environment with very little oxygen, you know, because they are anaerobic cells for the most part. Um, There is some research that shows that they can uh, metastasize. That's extremely, extremely rare. Um, but for the most part, like cancer does not like oxygen. So when you are exercising and you are just pumping your body with oxygen, you are creating a hostile environment for cancer. And so exercise is key. We need to move. We need to strengthen our bodies. A couple other things about exercise that are really cool when it comes to cancer is that it's, and this is a word I haven't used in a while, but it's one of my favorite words. It's, it's hormesis. Hormesis. Right. When we exercise, it stresses our bodies just enough. Mm -hmm. And when we stress our bodies just enough, they respond by adapting and getting stronger. Yeah. And literally what's happening is that your cells are getting stronger. I don't know if maybe that's the right literal word. They're multiplying more. They're getting mm-hmm. bigger if they're muscle cells. Mm-hmm. And when they do that, they demand more resources. Yeah. And if we know anything about cancer cells is that they are resource hogs yeah. because they are trying to multiply as quickly as they possibly can. So they just gobble up everything that comes in in terms of nutrients. When you are strengthening your body through exercise, you increase competition against those cancer cells. Mm -hmm, Exactly. And then through our own research, we obviously recognize the crucial importance of nutrition and how, um, you know, sugar feeds cancer basically. And so you need to really, really, um, up your game with veggies, healthy fats, healthy proteins, you know, um, really a whole food, uh, Diet. Yes. That's what I was going to talk about earlier is where this fits into our, our paradigm of health, Mm -hmm. right? We've, we've talked about the pyramid in the past. Yeah. Nutrition. Uh Nutrition is the foundation and treatments are the, the peak of the pyramid, meaning Mm -hmm. that they're only going to get you so far if you don't have a strong foundation of healthy eating. Exactly. And that's, that's a whole other conversation when it comes to cancer, because you've probably, if you've dealt with cancer, you've been told by doctors that you can eat whatever you want, as long as you're getting calories in and your body will take care of the rest. It's not true. Which is the biggest lie on the face of the planet. Please do not believe that. I mean, you can listen to your doctors about anything else, but please don't listen to them about that. Your doctors do not know anything about nutrition unless they have sought out that information personally Mm -hmm. on their own time, which they haven't. Well, that's actually a great question to ask your doctor though. If your doctor gives you nutritional recommendations, it is completely in your rights as a patient to say, what qualification do you have to tell me about nutrition? Did you take training on this? Right. Or is this your opinion? Exactly. Because the opinion of a doctor who has not gone through nutrition training education is as valuable as nutrition advice from your plumber. Yep. We actually just uh, interviewed a doctor last week and asked him about any nutrition training because he's in his last year of residency. This episode hasn't gone live it, yet. It hasn't. By the way. It, it'll come later. But like, and I said, well, what nutrition training have you had? And he's like, well, he's like, I don't remember because there's just so much stuff that we, other stuff that we have to study and memorize. He's like, I don't think there is any time or space for nutritional training. And so that's why I say like, don't go to a chiropractor and ask them, is acupuncture good for me? You know, it's Mm -hmm. like, don't go to a massage therapist and ask, well, is, um, is what are other, is, is foot zoning good for me? You know, cause they, they, well, a lot of massage well, therapists actually do foot zoning, but don't ask go your to, massage go to the expert. Don't ask your massage therapist about medications. Yes. Because they were not trained in medications. Exactly. Your doctors were. 
Mm-hmm. Ask your doctors so talk about to your medications. Doctor. Exactly. So um, like this is the perfect example of keeping everyone in their lane. Yes. Right. Keep your doctor in their lane. All they know is medication. All they know are statistics. Like sometimes those statistics are horrible. Don't listen to them. You mm. know, um, like instead incorporate because those statistics are true for a 90 year old as they are for a 20 year old. You know, they're, they're true for an, the 90 year old who eats burgers and fries and ice cream mm-hmm. versus the 20 year old who's exercising and eating a plant-based diet and lots of healthy fats and veggies and good proteins, you know, like all they know is the number applies to everyone. You're not everyone. You're an, you're an individual and your circumstances are completely unique to you. Mm -hmm. You're the one driving the ship or this car, I guess. You can drive whatever you want to drive because you are the one driving. It can be a flying (laughs) car if you want. So just drive it. (laughs) So (laughs) anyways, we're getting a little sidetracked. Yeah. So let's, let's dive into it. So, so you've learned about the value of Of oxygen, 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 and how hyperbaric just really hyper oxygenates the body, which is fantastic for people that are really not feeling well. Cause you can just lay there and you go from like 98% oxygen saturation to about a thousand percent oxygen saturation. Did we already talk about what hyperbaric is? No. Like so how, how it works. So hyperbaric basically turns your body into a soda can of oxygen. And so it uses pressure to uh, force oxygen. It makes the oxygen molecules uh, tighter, to, brings them tighter together, and then pushes it into your your body through your lungs. And so because you are, is it 60 or 70% water? It's we like, had this debate on our uh, other podcast. Right. Episode. It depends on if you're a man, a woman, or a child. Yes. And with women, it's like 55%. With men, it's like 60% or vice versa. But, but anyways, it's it's forcing a bunch of oxygen into your red blood cells and into your plasma, which typically plasma doesn't transport oxygen. But because of the pressure change, we now are trans... You are using plasma instead of the hemoglobin in your red blood cells to transport oxygen to your tissues. So... What happens when you have oxygen in tissues? ATP happens because you need glucose and you need oxygen to create energy. And so now you have way more reserves in your body to heal and repair and do all the things to take care of inflammation, to take care of infections, to like, it's just, if you think of your body as a bank account and let's say every day you get $10 to spend on digestion and repair and um, inflammation and fighting infections, you get in a chamber and now you have a hundred dollars. You have so much money, like I guess biological money to do all the things. And so that's what oxygen therapies do for your body. And and so so for kind of, parts here that at least four that really apply to cancer. And I should say just general health is that one, that oxygen helps to bring down inflammation, like Janique said, Mm -hmm. which is super important, especially if you're going through conventional cancer treatments that are very inflammatory, like Mm -hmm. radiation, right? We're, we're literally just firing up all of the, the inflammation in your body. The other thing it does is that it can fight infection Mm -hmm. and Cancer is not really an infection, not, not in the traditional sense, but if you have a ton of infection going on in yeah. addition to cancer, yeah. that just makes it that much easier for the cancer to take over. So the, the third thing is that cancer cells, generally speaking, do not like oxygen. Mm-hmm. And when they are exposed to oxygen, it weakens them. They yeah. prefer an oxygen free environment. So by forcing oxygen into every cell of your body, that also includes cancer cells. Mm-hmm. So it, it exposes them. I'm not going to say that it kills them no, because it does not necessarily, but it does make them vulnerable. Legally, to the, the only stuff. thing that can kill cancer is chemotherapy guys and radiation and, and surgery radiation and surgery. So um, there you go. But, uh, but the fact is that it does expose them so that they can be killed by the other things that you're doing. Yeah. And then there was a fourth one in there as well, which is that, oh, it helps with tissue regeneration. And Mm -hmm. this is really, really important. Once again, if you're going through radiation, Mm -hmm. chemotherapy, surgery, it will help you recover faster. So much faster. Remember, we talked about the importance of being able to bounce back physically Mm -hmm. after these treatments. Yes. This is your your super powered friend to help you get there. Exactly. So if you're thinking, well, I can't buy a chamber, don't worry. We have a solution for you and we'll talk about it after we finish talking about ozone. Yes. Because actually the hyperbaric is not even part of the... 
protocol. The, it is, well, no, hyperbaric isn't, but yeah. oxygen therapies are. Yes. So, um, so, okay. So long story short, uh, I start researching hyperbarics. I see it in these clinics. I was reading some, uh, papers that, uh, about, um, some cancer research conferences that were held in Germany. And there was a Q and a session where they asked one of the researchers about hyperbaric. And he said, you know, hyperbaric is showing tons of promise. You just need a lot of it. And so that's when we were like, Oh, we need to buy a chamber. But then I'm like, but not, but as we had the chamber and as we were running the clinic, I kept like my wheels and my head just kept turning. I'm like, how can people utilize this at home? And so that's when I came up with another solution, but let's rewind and let's talk about what drew you to the second aspect of the Apollo protocol, which was ozone therapy, because this is kind of Tristan's baby. He discovered it. He leapt on it. Like that was all him. So it was the same process, right? I was doing my own deep research into what else can help fight cancer when chemotherapy and radiation have uh, gone as far as they can go. And one of the things I kept coming across with other clinics was this thing called the Hockett Actually, mm -hmm. I thought it was the HOCAT at the time, mm -hmm. right? Which uh, it stands for hyperthermic ozone carbonic acid transdermal therapy, which is a mouthful, it is. an absolute mouthful. But this thing is a beast. And maybe I'm just going to focus right now on the ozone part mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, let's just do that. Because ozone is like the cousin of oxygen. Mm -hmm. So yeah. where oxygen is O2, meaning there's two oxygen atoms mm -hmm. bonded together, with ozone, we've got a third oxygen atom that has been kind of artificially shoved into the mix. Yeah. So it becomes this third wheel against its own will. Totally. And it doesn't want to be there. It's so, super reactive. So this ozone molecule is very, very reactive, meaning that as soon as it has the opportunity to shed that third wheel oxygen mm -hmm. atom, it's going to do that. Yeah. So, but it, that third wheel oxygen atom does a lot of good damage. <laughs> it, it does. Mm -hmm. And, and I say good damage because it's good for you, but it damages like pathogens and viruses and bacteria and stuff. Yeah. And, and so it's going to do a lot of the same stuff that oxygen does, mm -hmm. meaning that it can help fight inflammation. It can help fight infection. It can supercharge your natural killer cells in mm -hmm. your immune system. I can help with the, the tissue regeneration piece, but it does it all with more gusto. It does. It's, why do, why does it have more gusto? Well, because of the, the, the reactive unnatural bond that's there. Mm -hmm. It's, it's almost like you've loaded a cannon, yeah. but this cannon has a really sensitive trigger. Yeah. Right. So as soon as it gets the chance, bam, mm -hmm. there goes that third oxygen atom yep. and it's going to do Oxidize. its thing. So, mm -hmm. so that being said, Ozone can do damage to good cells as well if it has too much concentration and it gets to the wrong spots. For instance, if you breathe it in, mm -hmm. it becomes very uh, inflammatory Reactive. in your, uh, your the mucosal lining of your throat and lungs, and it'll cause you to cough quite a bit. Mm -hmm. It's happened to me before. Uh, it's also associated with air pollution, not because the ozone itself is really bad for you. Although once again, if you're breathing in too much, it would be, mm -hmm. but because of the processes that happen to create ozone in the natural environment are very bad for air quality in general. Mm -hmm. right? So it's just negative via association, but mm -hmm. it really isn't negative. So you when you use it properly, mm -hmm. it is an extremely powerful tool. Yeah extremely powerful. And honestly, like there's so much research around ozone right now, but there are some incredible phenomenons that we don't even understand yet. We just see it happening in the body and we're like, Hey, we'll take it. You know, like, I, I mean, we know it's very anti-inflammatory. We know that it helps with stealth infections, infection, well, any kind of infection, viral problems, but I mean, we're, we're seeing things come out of like the way that it helps people to detox, especially when it's administered in a, in the transdermal setting that we have it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of incredible. Do you know more about the science around what it's doing to the liver or it, to the liver specifically, yeah, how it helps the body dump like all these heavy metals? Because we see people, because you get in this, this, uh, this kind of like chamber with your head sticking out. And like we put a towel around your neck so no ozone is like leaking through. And then when they come out of these chambers, like 
you look at their towel and it's just black. And it's not because these people are dirty. It's because of like heavy metals that they have been sweating out. Potentially. We've never actually sent a sample in to get tested. True. So, so we don't know for sure, but we do know that these are people who have showered recently. Mm -hmm. They do not use your typical antiperspirants that have metals in them, Mm -hmm. but we are seeing these black marks that have no explanation. And the people that we see it most with are those that have had a lot of MRIs and have to have a gadolinium. And so that has been the common denominator with our blackest of black towels, which is kind of cool. So, so I don't really want to dive too much into the actual science of it. There are a couple different factors though. There's three phases to detoxification. Uh, the first phase is kind of a, a tagging process where all of the toxins in the system are activated and that sort of puts a flag on them so that the detox system knows what to target. And is this I, happening in the liver? This happens throughout the body, throughout the body. Mm -hmm. And the liver, where it fits in is that it's one of the primary creators of all these other compounds and and molecules that are then added to all the tagged toxins. Mm -hmm. it's, It's called conjugation. And this process of adding these molecules to the toxins makes it so that they can be eliminated either through the urine or through the feces, Mm -hmm. which is the third phase. Right. So we have the tagging, the conjugation, and then the elimination. Mm. And uh, as far as we understand so far, uh, what the ozone really does is it helps to supercharge the first phase of detoxification. The, the tagging. So it's like tagging everything like crazy. Mm-hmm. And it, uh, another thing that it does that's kind of related to this is it creates what are called reactive oxygen species. Mm-hmm. And these are double-edged swords because they can cause a lot of inflammation in the body. They can do a lot of damage to mitochondria and cells and things like that, mm-hmm. but they can also just kick major butt when it Mm -hmm. comes to things that shouldn't be in the system. So there are some theories out there that the ozone actually stresses the mitochondria. And when the mitochondria gets stressed by the ozone, that it actually produces more ATP. Isn't Mm -hmm. that correct? Yeah. Yeah. It can. And there's some evidence that it helps the mitochondria get better at Mm -hmm. producing and utilizing energy. Yes. So, um, so anyways, we bought this Hocket machine, put it in our, in our little, clinic and but I'm not even done yet. Oh, go. We've go. only talked about the ozone oh. and I'm not going to spend as much time on the others, but there are two other kind of major components to it. And, and the second one is one I'm very, very excited about. And that's the infrared sauna that's built into the machine. Yeah. And infrared is fantastic for many reasons, but two of the big ones are it's helpful for immune health and it's helpful for cardiovascular health. Mm-hmm. And I will leave it at that because I think saunas deserve their own episode entirely. They totally do. But uh, but you have that happening at the same time as the ozone. Which is cool because it like super, super charges the immune system. Mm-hmm. And so the heat combined with the ozone is like the most beautiful symphony on the face of the body planet. <laughs> and it, it feels really good, by it the way. It does feel really good. Thing. Exactly. Your own little sauna session. Pe- people always ask what's the difference between IV ozone and the transdermal ozone that we do. And um, I mean, maybe because we're biased, but we've had so many people do IV ozone and they do this and they're like, this is way better. Like it's less invasive. It's just as effective and it feels good. It's actually pleasurable Mm -hmm. to, to do it through this transdermal method. Whereas the IV process is, it's kind of devastating to your Mm -hmm. body, right? Not, not to the same extent as say chemotherapy, but it'll knock you out for a few days in terms of just how you feel. Totally. So that's basically the, the key parts of the Hocket Mm -hmm. and the ozone is by far the, our favorite thing about it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the Hocket's basically a vessel for the ozone therapy. Mm -hmm. So in our clinic, we started doing hyperbaric, we started doing ozone and we started seeing these incredible results of people healing and detoxifying and healing and just going through these wonderful cycles of uh, reclaiming their health again. And I was one of them. I, I did 
the hyperbaric and the hocket multiple times a week. Mm -hmm. That first year I was doing the hyperbaric up to five, six times a week for a little while. I was doing the hocket up to six times a week for a little while. So I was uh, the most intensive user that we had of these machines. Yeah, exactly. But then we started um, coming into a few issues. Um, number one being a government agency shut down our hyperbaric use. <laughs> so, so that sucks. Mm. I know we're still fighting that right now. And we're still not really talking about it other than mentioning that at this point. Yeah, exactly. Maybe by the time this goes live, we'll have gone more public with it. Right, but. exactly. But um, so they, they shut down our ability to utilize the hyperbaric, um, but we can still use the transdermal ozone, which is the Hockett machine. Mm -hmm. But even before all of this went down, like there was always in my mind, like that that could be an, an issue. But how do people that don't live in Utah, how do they get these therapies? Mm -hmm besides going to a clinic in Mexico or Spain and spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, like not only is hemorrhaging money so unempowering, but having to do that with cancer and leaving your family for months, there's nothing about that to me that screams healing. Right. And, and, and these chambers, the hyperbaric chambers can cost a hundred thousand dollars all by themselves. Exactly. Once you've got everything done and and that's if you do it right. Right. And you don't just go on eBay and like buy any old chamber and be like, I hope this one works. Well, and, and another avenue that we did consider was to get the the canvas blow up hyperbaric chambers, which a lot of you have probably used before. Mm -hmm. You've seen them in like a chiropractor's office or yes. something. But uh, why did we decide not to do that? Because it just doesn't go deep enough. It, it's not therapeutic enough. Yeah. And, and, and I feel like doing this other this other oxygen machine that we're going to be talking about is way more effective than getting a blow up hyperbaric chamber Yeah. because it's killing two birds with one stone. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So just by default with all of these people coming in for Lyme and like chronic fatigue and cancer, by default, we started doing these uh, protocols where they were doing ozone first and then hyperbaric and then, or they would rotate. They would do ozone one day, hyperbaric the other day, ozone one day, hyperbaric. A lot of people I think would do the ozone first and then the hyperbaric right after just because of time. Mm -hmm. They just want to like blow through it. They don't want to be in the office every single day. Um, even though we are very pleasant people <laughs> <laughs> and they would have to talk to us all day. Um, but, but by default, this, this, this plan just, kept happening and people kept getting incredible results, pain relief, increased energy, detox, detoxification, better sleep. And so I remember thinking, I'm like, if only people could take this at home, like, like, and, and then I started thinking, I'm like, no one has a hundred thousand dollars to just spend on these machines. And so I started looking at other companies and just by like the grace of God, like these companies then showed up, like people started mentioning other companies on, um, online. And I, I went down these rabbit holes and I started talking to these companies and I'm like, wait a second, you don't have to buy a $50,000 Hocket machine, mm -hmm. but you can buy this like $7,000 one that is, that, that does the important part, which is heats your body up and like pumps ozone into a chamber. Mm -hmm. And I was like, people can buy this. Like, so there's a company called longevity and, um, who sell these, uh, ozone chambers. Now they're, they're nothing like the Hockett, but I don't care because at least you're getting transdermal ozone and you're heating your body up. And so I remember thinking, what if people bought that? And then I was like, but there's the oxygen aspect because if you could heat your body up and get ozone at the same time and breathe highly concentrated oxygen while doing the transdermal ozone, what a powerhouse that would be. You would mm -hmm. be pumping your body with oxygen, lubricating your body with heat and like blood is flowing everywhere through all your tissues because you're heated up and you're getting ozone too. Like what could be better than that? And so that's when the, the company, um, the EWAT machine. So EWAT stands for... Oh yeah, yeah. There's LiveO2 and then there is ewat.com. Mm -hmm. And so like the ewat um we have a link on our Instagram account that you can look at these. If you go into my bio link on Instagram, we should just make a can we do like gutsy.ch slash store and then people can look at these companies online? Well we already have a store. Uh, uh, we yeah, but like for listeners, if well, there's a quick link for them to go to. Yeah, so 
what we'll actually do is I'm going to give away the name. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Gutsy.ch slash Apollo. Oh, okay. Perfect. And that's where we'll have everything. Perfect. I love that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So Gutsy. It's does called the Apollo. The Apollo Project. Protocol. I mean, <laughs> the Apollo <laughs> Protocol. Get it right, babe. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, so Gutsy.ch slash Apollo. And, um, and so the, there's a company called Ewat and there's also Livo too, but what they do is they create a bag and a mask. And so you fill up this bag with oxygen and you put this mask on and then you exercise while you're breathing in highly concentrated oxygen. I think it's like 93 or 95% oxygen saturation. Depends on how high your altitude is actually. Exactly. And so you can actually buy an oxygen concentrator if you want. They're about 1500 bucks or you can find like a local oxygen supply company and just buy oxygen tanks from them. And each oxygen tank is like 40 or 50 bucks and that'll last you like forever. Aviator oxygen, I believe is what you would Mm -hmm. look for unless you can get a prescription from a doctor for medical grade. But yeah, honestly speaking, they're the same thing. So, so just get aviator. It's cheaper too. So my, my thought process was this, it was like, okay, what if they did the EWAP machine breathing in 100% oxygen one day while in the ozone sauna, the longevity ozone sauna, and they did a 30 minute session. And then the next day they're exercising with 100%, well, with the concentrated oxygen, like on a bike or a treadmill or doing some high intensity um, interval training while breathing in that oxygen. Because remember, you're heating up your body, you're breathing in oxygen, you are pumping, you're literally using your muscles and your tendons and your ligaments to create pumping actions of pushing oxygen into your tissues to help them grow bigger and stronger. And so while you're breathing in the, co- the concentrated oxygen, you are exercising and forcing that in deeper. Mm-hmm. So alternating days, right? Doing the ozone sauna while breathing in 100% oxygen and heating your body and doing the transdermal ozone stuff. And then the other day you're exercising with the oxygen and you're pumping and you're getting it deep in. And then the next day you're doing the ozone with the oxygen. And then the next day you're doing exercise with oxygen. And then the next day you're doing ozone with oxygen. And then the next day you're doing exercise with oxygen. And I, wonder, I, was just like, I wonder if you could experiment with doing both on the same day though. Well, it, it, that would have to you would have to take in a lot of things into account. Like how healthy is the person? Mm-hmm. Have they just like done surgeries? Yeah. Um, what can they handle? Because some people can get in their ozone sauna and like crank up the ozone and crank up the heat and they're fine. Mm-hmm. And some people get in the ozone sauna and we have it on like 50% and really low temperature and they are just wiped out. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I want to, I want to say something about who this is for. Like, mm-hmm. yes, it's absolutely intended for people who are dealing with serious illness and chronic illness. Mm-hmm. But there's another group of people that I believe could benefit in a huge way from this. Athletes. Athletes. Totally. Absolutely. What a what an amazing way to mm-hmm. just multiply yes. your gains. Exactly. And you guys, like, it, like, oxygen is so healing. It's the healing molecule. Like, there's a reason why every single cell in your body needs oxygen. It really does. Mm -hmm. I mean, besides it being anti-inflammatory, like I said earlier, you need it to produce energy because energy is life force. And so oxygen is life force. And we're living in a world that is becoming dirtier and dirtier Mm -hmm. in terms of the air quality, which means that your body needs more oxygen more than ever. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, we live in a world that is so emotionally toxic that so many people are not breathing well Mm -hmm. because we have this chronic anxiety that causes us to breathe shallowly and to tense ourselves up. So just those two reasons alone Mm -hmm. makes the need for added oxygen that much more powerful. Yep. Now there is a third aspect to this protocol that if you do want to take this to the next level, you can, and um, that's buying an infrared sauna. Mm -hmm. So is it near or far infrared? Ideally it's both Mm -hmm. actually. In fact, our favorite company is clear light saunas. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely incredible for multiple reasons, but, but two of the biggest reasons, number one is that it's, the lowest EMFs that we've been able to find Mm -hmm. in terms of saunas. 
Not the only, not the only good one. Don't worry mm-hmm. if you can't get a clear light because they are expensive. There are other good options out there. Right. But it is as far as we've been able to find in terms of the real world testing, it is the lowest EMF out there. And the second is that you get near infrared, you get far infrared, mm-hmm. and you get mid infrared. Yeah. So you're hitting the whole spectrum. What does that mean? We'll talk about it in another episode. But yeah. but what you need to know about it is that these infrared waves as they go into your body have incredible healing benefits. Yes, exactly. And so that's something that you can throw into your little routine as well. And now you're probably thinking, well, how much are these machines? Mm. Um, So I've seen a lot of incredible things happen online thanks to social media. And if you could get your community and your loved ones to like set up a GoFundMe, you guys, all you need is about $10,000 just to buy the EWAT and to buy the, um, the longevity ozone sauna. That's all you need. Like, and I know you're like, Oh, only $10,000, but think about it this way. If you go to Mexico, like hope for, what is it called? Hope for healing. I believe The the center Mm -hmm. in Mexico. Uh, I think a week there or no, no, no. A month Month there there. is about $45,000, Yeah, you know, so you can buy these machines and do therapy daily for years. And I'll tell you that a month is a great start, but you do not heal from something like cancer in a month. It didn't take a month for it to show up and it's certainly not going to take a month to get rid of it. Cancer sometimes takes five to 10 years to develop. You guys with cells taking that long to manifest in your body, you're going to need a good few years to fight it off. And I mean, if we look at it just in terms of cell turnover, right? Mm-hmm. It takes seven years, they say, for yes. every cell in your body to... To be completely to, new. Yeah, renewed. to be completely new. Mm-hmm. Now, that's not to say that that means anything in terms of this, but to, that's kind of the timeline that the body and yeah. the cells work on. Exactly. So this is something that requires sustained effort over mm-hmm. time. And just going to a center and blasting yourself with all these healing protocols is not going to do the trick. You have to have something to follow it up with if you do that. Yep. Like again, one month at a center, $45,000, it can, it can get you on the map. Right. But then you need, you need like, it's the follow up. And I remember thinking that I remember when we wanted to take Tristan to these, I was looking at one in Arizona and the one in Mexico. And I remember thinking, you know, with everything I know about the body, like we need more than a month and he yeah. can't live at that center for a year. Like that would completely bankrupt us mm-hmm. completely. And I was ready to sell our house. You know, I'm like, we got a lot of money on our house. Like I'm just going to sell it. And then that would have bought it. us like four months. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? And like, but you guys, and so that's why I was like, no, we need to buy these machines and we need to use them. And then we need to let other people around us use them too, so that they don't have to leave their doctors and their loved ones and spend all all of their life savings on a Hail Mary because that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. It's a Hail Mary. It's like, hopefully this will work. This is our last option. And I never want people to be so desperate that they are like, let's just hemorrhage all our money. Right. So that's why we started the clinic because we wanted Mm -hmm. to make these treatments available in the first place, but also in a way that would not completely break people totally, or price them out of the opportunity. Exactly. we're taking it a step further with the Apollo protocol mm-hmm. because you don't have to be near us exactly. for this, right? You and don't have to buy a plane ticket to the other side of the country mm-hmm. and fall into the same trap where you might get a month of treatments, but then you've got to go back home and that's not enough time. And and we've had people message us and be like, I'm thinking of flying out to your clinic and doing your treatments. And I'm like, don't do that. Don't just buy the machines and stay at home and do it. Like, because you're just uprooted from your routine, from your family, from your kids, you know, and you're welcome to come and visit us, by the way. We would Absolutely. love to talk to you and do your blood work and your hair DNA analysis and empower you with tools from what to do then. But after you've seen us, then what? What are you going to do for the next five months, mm-hmm. 10 months, 15 months, two years, three years, you know, like there's, there's more. And so these machines can help you have like a, your own healing center, your own hope for healing center in your home, mm-hmm. you know, because um, everyone, and, and the beauty of it is like your spouse can do it. Your children can do it. Like everyone should be doing these therapies mm-hmm. because we do live in a toxic world of environmental toxins and yucky food. And we need all need to be detoxifying all of us. You can become your neighborhood spa. You really could. You could charge your neighbors if you want, or just do like, you know, just make sure you're following all the legal laws and advertising (laughs) things that you can get in trouble for. Please don't get arrested. But, but, but seriously, you're not, 
the only one that would benefit from this. Mm -mm. And I I don't know if that's enough to get you over the top to decide it's worthwhile. But if you do have a serious health condition, Mm -hmm. I think that this is an absolutely fantastic thing to look into. It really is. It really is. Now, if you think about these, these healing centers like Hope for Healing in Mm -hmm. Mexico, and you think about what they do for people, it's basically you're taking care of the nutritional aspect. Mm -hmm. You're providing some of the treatments, which... You know, I don't know that they do any that are more powerful than what the Apollo Protocol has. You for mean you. at these clinics? Yeah, they do a bunch of IV they, stuff. They do all kinds Tons. of stuff, mm-hmm. but, but and they I don't, do like low dose chemotherapies in conjunction well, with these. Yeah, I mean, and we can talk about whether that's really a good idea or not. But mm-hmm. but basically, what I'm saying is that you can get ninety percent of the way there mm-hmm. for ten percent of the cost. Yeah. And, Exactly. And, and we're not saying like, these are your anti-cancer treatments. Like these are your treatments that are going to get your body through the treatments. When you combine these with a really good lifestyle yes, nutrition. makeover, mm-hmm. you take care of the nutrition, you take exactly. care of the, the life stressors, the spiritual issues, the mm-hmm. whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And you do all of this. That is so incredibly powerful. It's mm-hmm. enough. That's, it's that's enough. really what I want to say is that it really is enough to get you over the top. Yes. Because if you can do these therapies and still exercise, you guys, uh, you're, you're there. And there's the third aspect of the nutrition, which we touched on earlier. Like we literally created a program to handhold people through their nutritional healing, because that was probably, that's probably the most daunting part for everyone in this space is not only is there so much conflicting evidence out there and so many opinionated people like ourselves (laughs) who um, have strong, um, Uh, ideas on nutrition, but like, how do you filter through that? And how do you, um, who has 40 hours a week to study nutrition? We do. do. (laughs) (laughs) That's what we do. And, um, and, uh, and so that's why I created this program so that it, you are literally handheld through your nutrition healing. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful thing. We actually just had a member message us. She hasn't had her period in five years and she's been doing our program. She, she has a couple times with the help of hormone medication. Yes. Like with, uh, like the birth, like birth control and something like that. mm -hmm, But she hasn't had a natural period unaided by medication in five years. And she's young. She's like 26. And, um, and she messaged us, when was it on Friday? And yesterday. she's like, she, yesterday, and she's yeah. like, I'm spotting you guys. And we're like, yay, Ooh. you know, like, <laughs> like, but th- that's the beauty of the program is we get, we can help you figure this out. We can help handhold you and give you your meal plans and give you your menu and say, this is do, follow this and you're good. Mm-hmm. You don't have to think about it again. You don't have to second guess. Like this is enough. Don't, don't give it another ounce of your time or energy because we've already done that. We've been doing that for three years. There are two ways that people really mess up when it comes to their approach to healing from any serious illness. Number one, they discount the importance of fundamentals, Mm -hmm. meaning that they do not appreciate how powerful it is to just get your nutrition down. Yes. They they want to cut corners with supplements. Mm -hmm. They want to cut corners with supplements. They want to they want to say it doesn't matter that mm-hmm. you can eat anything. They want to go to these really crazy fad diets yeah. that have all kinds of big promises, but no history of success. Yeah. Right. And, and they, they skip over the most obvious thing, which is let's do what was done for a long, long, long time yeah. with great success. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. Which is let's eat a whole bunch of vegetables and yes. some really nice whole foods that are nutrient dense. Mm-hmm. Right. Let's, yep. let's cut out all of the modern convenience foods that are full of sugar and chemicals and and refined carbohydrates that our bodies are not used to do not like, they might think they like it, but it always ends up going badly. Right. So, so get the nutrition down. That's, that's thing. Number one that is so powerful and so underrated. Mm -hmm. What's thing number two. I can't remember. Okay. (laughs) Why do I keep doing this tonight? I I need to go to bed. But I have a thing number two. Okay. So, um, just like a plug for the membership. One of our members messaged us a different one and she was saying, you know, because I make all the members make green smoothies in the morning and it's, I call that the multivitamin. I'm like, don't take a multivitamin. This is your multivitamin. And Mm -hmm. it's not a, it's not the yummiest smoothie. And I don't care because I'm like, you just chug this thing down with like sheer will. 
Anyway, well, she said, uh, yeah. I mean, I, it's not that it's bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> I crave it, you guys. Anyways, she said when she first started taking them, like she didn't like them at all. And now, she, and then she said, but now I crave them and I can't wait to start my day off with my green smoothie. She says, I can't, like she says, it's the most delicious thing. And you guys, that is how the body works is when you introduce it to healing foods, it craves healing foods. And so, um, so I just love hearing stuff like that because nutrition heals and we need it so badly. You need it when you are engaging or embarking in a cancer journey or any kind of journey, like a Lyme healing journey or being a super athlete or something, you know, utilize nutrition, utilize the oxygen therapy, utilize the ozone therapy, utilize saunas, um, use them all because they all do incredible things. And the beauty is that you don't have to spend thousands and thousands on well, doctor's opinions on this. You can just do it at home. And that brings me to thing number two, which I remembered. You, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Thing number two is the power of your mind. Mm -hmm. All right. This is so underappreciated by people. And this is like the third time we're hitting this topic. Um, I don't know when this episode is going to go live, but we've talked about this a lot, but let me tell you something. When you believe in the program that you've got for yourself, mm -hmm. you are capable of creating miracles. You really are. Or if you're opposed to that language, you are capable of opening up the pathway to let miracles happen in your mm -hmm. life. All right. I'm not kidding about this. The mind is the most powerful tool that you have. And so aligning yourself with what you believe will be helpful, getting yourself into a mind space that is open to yep. possibility yep. is absolutely magical. Mm -hmm. You are creating magic by doing that. And that is one of my absolute favorite things about this protocol is that it is one that you can believe in. Mm -hmm. And that's, I'm not saying that that means it's purely placebo. Yeah. There's science behind this, but it is so solid and it has such a good track record mm -hmm. that if you commit to this, yeah. you can feel so confident that it's going to give you the results that you want. Yeah. And just by becoming confident you increase the odds of getting the results you want mm -hmm. dramatically. It's like this positive feedback loop that totally. just keeps building and building and building until it's like, oh, yes, exactly. This is amazing. I mean, we could go for another hour on all the incredible healing stories that mm -hmm. have happened through these therapies, through the, the ozone therapy and the hyperbaric, but, um, but we'll spare you because, um, because it doesn't matter what we think and it doesn't matter the stories we tell. What matters is what, resonates with you. Right. If you feel called to do these therapies, do them, you know, like get a GoFundMe, get $10,000 and have these treatments in your home for yourself, for your family, for your community, for your friends, but just do it. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Research it. I mean, so this is what I wanted to mention earlier. You guys, I don't even know if I should talk about this because I'm always worried that the government is listening. Well, to now me. you have to, I you know. can't leave us all hanging. Okay. So <laughs> it was it 2014 or 2016. There was a 14. massive, okay. So in 2014, massive outbreak of, um, what was it? Ebola. Yeah. Ebola it, it, in it, Sierra Leone. In fact, Ebola was the most Googled term in that year. Yeah. So this huge outbreak of Ebola, people are dying left, right, and center. You get Ebola and I think you have a 40% chance of living. Okay. So 60% of people are dying. So there are these, uh, these doctors that, that actually buy these longevity uh, machines, the ones that are included in the ozone sauna. They just have the machine that creates the ozone and they go to Sierra Leone and they start doing, um, ozone therapies on these people and they are curing them of Ebola. And they, they haven't even started yet. They're literally just doing treatments on the people who are going to be doing treatments, mm -hmm, exactly. right? But these are people who have been exposed and they have Ebola. Mm -hmm. So they're and saying, so they're, all right, we're going to show you how to do it by healing you mm -hmm. and they're doing it. And so they're, they're curing these people of Ebola 10 days later into this whole like conquest um, they get a cease and desist from the government. That sounds really familiar, actually. So they get a cease and desist from the government of Sierra Leone. Saying, this, get you, out, you're you done, leave do our this. country. So this is what happened. Big Pharma, who is coming out with a vaccine for Ebola. Have they come out with one yet? 
I don't know. I don't, so anyways, I don't care. Big Pharma <laughs> complained to the World Health Organization and then the World Health Organization con- contacted the government of Sierra Leone and said, this is what these doctors are doing. You need to kick them out. And guess what? Those doctors were kicked out. They said specifically the WHO said to Sierra Leone, if you don't get them out of here, we will cut off your funding mm-hmm. for all medical stuff. So basically they mm-hmm. said, we're going to screw you over big time unless mm-hmm. you get rid of these doctors. So of mm-hmm. course the country leaders had no choice. They had no so choice. they said, all right, get out of here. We need our medical funding. So what these doctors actually did was they, they saw people had symptoms and they said, we're not even going to test you to see if you have Ebola. We're just going to treat you. You know, they, they recognized they had a really small window and they're like, don't test yourself. Just come well, before because we get kicked out. Here's the treatment. Mm-hmm. It was ozone. It was ozone. They were doing ozone and I think they were doing like glutathione IVs or something. Right. But and like, and it was costing $5 to cure these people. $5. That's it. Yeah. Like people were dying and they could have prevented it, but because it was such a, so anyways, bleh. okay. You're, you're probably rewind. listening to this thinking that, <laughs> like, Oh my goodness, these are conspiracy theorists. No, okay, look so, it up. Just not on Google. Yeah. D- so go to <laughs> DuckDuckGo dot com and then uh look up ebola sierra leone ozone therapy and you'll find all the articles there this is a real thing you guys so the reason why i brought up that story is to explain to you and to give you an example of how incredible ozone therapy is Mm -hmm. like that's how powerful it is that it can help people and we can't say cure so every time i said cure guys just pretend i said um miraculously create a remission Okay. <laughs> or whatever it is that or won't get us in trouble. Yeah. It, <laughs> we're not selling the stuff, so it's not, you know, we're not advertising here. We're right, just, that's true. We're just telling you what we've learned. That's true. Okay. So that that's the power of ozone, you guys. And I mean, there's so much research on hyperbaric that I don't even need to go into that because it's really incredible. So again, if you're listening to this podcast and you're like, I need these healing therapies in my home, um, go to gutsy.ch forward slash Apollo. A-P-O-L-L-O. Mm-hmm. I was going to call it the superhuman protocol, but that's taken. So, so <laughs> actually tell them the story. So there's already a superhuman protocol. Yeah, there's a superhuman and, protocol. And this guy, it's a decent protocol. It's okay. It's like a six, right? Mm-hmm. But, uh, but the one that Johnny put together, it's like, an 11. Thanks. It's so great. They had to increase the scale. So what's what's better than superhuman? God. God. God (laughs) God like powers. (laughs) And Apollo is the God of healing, Uh right? And the God of medicine. And the God of medicine, ironically. Isn't it? I don't know. I'll have to look it up again. And so I was, I was like, well, we're not going to call this superhuman protocol. We're going to call it a godly protocol because you will become a God after this. And so, um, so you guys, that's the Apollo protocol in a nutshell. I'm going to be doing a class on it as well. Um, I don't know when I'm going to be doing it just because other things keep coming. Maybe in January. Probably in January. We'll see. Yeah, December is exactly. a hard month to do. It is. But um, keep an eye and an ear out for that class because we'll get more into the nitty gritties on how to utilize these therapies for yourselves after, because you're going to be like, okay, I have these machines now what? Mm -hmm. And so I'll talk about certain types of protocols, symptoms to look out for, um, how to start, how to increase the momentum and the dosage and kind of like how to listen to your body because it can all be kind of overwhelming and daunting. So we'll create a class to break that down for you really easily. Mm -hmm. And is that all? Is that all we have? That's, that's basically it. Yeah. Awesome. So once again, gutsy.ch slash Apollo, A-P-O-L-L-O. Mm-hmm. And that's where we'll kind of explain the the different parts of this protocol, which by the way, it's a living protocol, right? That's what's cool about this, that this is based on our personal and clinical experience, mm-hmm. but it's also one that is going to be kind of growing and changing and, and adapting to what we see as mm-hmm. people start using it and implementing it, exactly. mm, which means it's just going to get better and better mm-hmm. as time goes on. Exactly. So this is really exciting. Gutsy.ch slash Apollo. Uh-huh. And of course, reach out to us if you have questions about this. Exactly. And if you have a loved one that is struggling with any of these uh, issues that we spoke of in the beginning, send them this podcast, you guys, let them listen to it. Let them decide for themselves if they feel like they are in need of some 
crazy mega healing machines and modalities, uh, because, um, because everyone is actually like, even if you're a healthy family, like everyone should have an ozone machine in their house. Um, oh, also, if you do contact Longevity, speak to Shelby and use the code JR100 and you'll get $100 off any of the machines you buy. Sweet. So, yeah, exactly. I know, I, I've been talking to her a lot. <laughs> Shelby's <laughs> sick of us, so call her no, so that she doesn't she regret all the time she's spent. She legit is probably so tired of talking to me, but I just keep calling her and asking her more and more questions about her machines and like, okay, if someone has this, what would they do and what machine should they get and which package should they buy and blah, blah, blah. So, um, um, so yeah, talk to Shelby at Longevity and use the code JR100 to get $100 off of your your bundle or your machine or whatever it is, you guys. And good luck. Keep researching. Keep empowering yourselves. Um, be your own patient advocate, your own healers, um, because nobody knows your body as well or better than you do. So that's it. Do you have any parting words of Th- wisdom? That's it. Don't forget to tell all about this to the super athletes in your life. Oh yeah, exactly. Because if I know anything about super athletes is that they're always looking for the next thing that's going to give them an edge in their competitions. Totally. This is it. This is the thing. So, okay. I know we're trying to like close off. You guys, (laughs) we had a a client who injured her knee a week before the St. George marathon. And she came in to help with that contusion on her knee um, twice that week. She beat her best time by nine minutes. That's a lot, guys. That's if, a if lot. If you're not familiar with racing, holy cow. Like normally if they beat their time by like one or two minutes, that's incredible. She beat her best time by nine minutes. That's unbelievable. So, um, so she was so fast. And that was like literally seven days after her injuring her knee, like getting a massive contusion on her knee, like she couldn't walk. So um, there's something to these machines. And that's all I'm going to say. Thanks for listening. Until next time. See you later. See you later.